So last night against the Hornets, Dame shot two for 14 from three, which continues a maybe alarming trend with him early in the year. For the season, he is now shooting 23% from three on about 50-something attempts. And if you go down the Blazers game log, if Dame was just simply being his normal self, there's a decent chance they could be 5-1 and one right now. And people have been speculating if it's an abdominal injury that he had last season that he's still feeling the effects of now. Because of course he did not play well in the Olympics either. I don't know man, but these are all shots that we've seen him make a million times. I even tried to see if there was some sort of trend with his misses, like if his shots were too short, too long, or whatever. And it was pretty even across the board. So really, I've got no idea. It's Damian Lillard. He just has to make these shots consistently. If he doesn't, then what the hell is going on? Now, I don't want to imply that Dame has been terrible. He still had 12 assists in this game, and it doesn't matter how big of a slump he's on, he's always going to have gravity. As you can see right here where he gets the screen, two defenders are on him, and then Nurk has a, an easier time rolling to the rim. And just to state the obvious, he can still beat guys off the dribble, make the defense collapse, and then kick it out to open shooters. Besides that, in this Hornets game, LaMelo had a couple of floaters that I really liked. That one was cool, but there's another one that's really, really good. This is not it, but this is a LaMelo signature already, these scoop shot layup things. Anyway, here it is. Here's the infamous floater that I've been building up for 20 seconds. Look at that thing. Good lord. That's a straight up 15 footer. Screen from Plumley, Nurkic in kind of a drop. I mean, Powell got over there, but when the floater gods bless LaMelo, that's, that's just how it's going to go. The other thing that happened was uh, Kelly Oubre went nuts. Six threes for Oubre. Miles Bridges taking uh, Cody Zeller off the dribble. They suddenly have so much playmaking. Look at on the court right now. LaMelo, we know what he can do. Hayward's one of the best passing wings in the league. Rozier is not in currently, but you know he can make plays for guys. They've got Ish Smith coming off the bench. And now they got Miles Bridges making plays for dudes as well. Like The ball's just zipping around everywhere. Now we had the Lakers Rockets, where the Lakers, they won by 10, but they were up by like 30 or whatever. And LeBron was attempting to embarrass Shengun. He almost got him. And Shengun, he was turning around and looking any which way, but the shot just didn't fall. And speaking of Shengun, he threw a turnover to Westbrook. This is a great play by Russ. He gets that and throws the bullet to Mello in the corner. Carmelo Anthony is kind of going nuts from three right now. Now let's talk about Jalen Green. So. He has not had a great opening to his career. He's third in touches per game on this team, and he's like a distant third behind Kevin Porter Jr. and Christian Wood. It'll be interesting to see if that holds up as the year goes on. I feel like Rockets fans are already a little frustrated that he's not getting the ball more. He's certainly still getting shots, and there was some controversy about him not getting enough calls. He's gotten a lot more trips to the line the last two games, which I think will continue because he's not afraid to go to the rim. Now we go on to Nets Pistons. James Harden, since I was all like, what the hell's going on with Harden? He's been totally fine. He had like 12 assists in this one. His efficiency was great as well. Uh, there he gets the roll to Aldridge. Lamarcus Aldridge, moving well. Now for the Pistons side of uh, this game. So Cade did not play. So there's that right away. But I want to talk about Killian Hayes for a little bit. It has not exactly been a breakout party for him early on this season. He has not been shooting that often, and even when he has, he's uh, struggled to put it in the hoop. And I'm not totally sure what the solution is. I mean, they can lean on him more in pick-and-roll opportunities. They can tell him to be more daring from three, like that one. They can try to get him moving off the ball or whatever. I mean, here he's trying to create for himself. I don't know. He did have five steals, though, including one time where he stripped Harden. That doesn't happen too often. Besides that, the uh, Jazz beat the Bucks. Am I the only one who feels like the Bucks have not had their actual team besides the first game of the season? Let's look at some Go Bear blocks, because why not? We got Grayson Allen. Donovan Mitchell did a good job initially, honestly, and that's the Nassus who is a victim of Go Bear. The Jazz are now 5-1 and one on the season, and I don't think anyone is that surprised. Grayson, just don't, just don't try it, man. Because you know Gobert is going to make him great defensively by himself. The three-point shooting is still there. Conley doesn't look old as hell or anything. Now, of course, the question will be how will it look in the playoffs. That's all fair. But for the next, like, five months, Jazz fans, you're sitting pretty. Let's get an update on Giannis's, uh jump shot that everybody was talking about. 
He's shooting 30%, man. He's basically the same dude. And now we head to Mavericks Kings, and this was the exact moment where the Kings thought they had a chance in this one. Tristan Thompson does a good job on Luka. We got like five seconds left when he's crossing half court. And then he just makes this ridiculous step back like 40 foot bomb because that's just what Luka does. He was one for seven on the game. His next two threes were complete bricks. But it doesn't matter because when he makes this one, it's like, well, that's just how it's going to go sometimes. And to get an update on the Mavs offense, I crapped on Dwight Powell's shooting in the last video. And then he made a three in this one, so that's nice. I'm going to assume teams are still going to leave Dwight Powell open and dare him to make those. Anyway, this right here looked a bit like uh, last year's Mavs, where it's both corners have shooters, dive guy sets a screen for Luka, and then at that point it's pretty much just let Luka make the right decision. Darren Fox had to at least kind of linger around the paint. There you go. Uh, Dallas's offensive rating in this game was 108, which would be like 25th last year, but it actually would be like 7th or 8th this year. So for what all that means, I don't know. The point is, is that they're obviously not a finished product. Also this one here, I mean, you've got Jalen Brunson and Tim Hardaway Jr. going in opposite directions. Is that a good idea? I don't know, but it's certainly movement. After that, you've got Powell setting the screen for Hardaway who keeps going. He's able to get an okay look. As for why the Kings lost this, I mean, they missed a million shots. But De'Aaron Fox did not play that well. And this has been a bit of a thing so far. Like, their offense has actually still managed to be statistically okay so far. But De'Aaron Fox has had a bit tougher of a time than you'd like. In fact, the only area of the floor that he's shooting well at right now is at the basket. And there he's shooting about 60%. For, for mid-range, the threes, everything, It's it's been real rough so far. So, in some weird way, you could be optimistic and be like, well, once he gets it going, they'll be fine. Anyway, let's look at this play from Davion Mitchell. Jalen Brunson in transition. Davion just locks him up. I feel like Kings fans are losing their minds over Davion Mitchell, and I feel like it's fair. Here's a tweet that Wob had about Davion. This is like a week ago now. You see him on Donovan Mitchell. He already gets the reach in right there. And then he does the same thing that he did to Jalen Brunson, although this time, the ball just goes out and he's going the other way with it. Alright, now let's check out LeBron's uh, dunk against the Rockets where he outruns Jalen Green in transition. Also, there's a McRib advertisement. I can't think of when the last time I had a McRib was. Because usually I just go Nuggets fries, you know what I mean? Barbecue sauce as well. Like that. That's usually just a, just a money order at McDonald's. I, I don't know, I don't get too adventurous... With, what the hell am I, oh yeah, LeBron dunked it, by the way. 